have me. Although today, nearly a decade after his death, Alfred Hitchcock is probably still the most famous picture director in the world, it is ironic that some of his most personal or ambitious works are virtually unknown. It was a situation Hitch himself was acutely aware of, how much he was a prisoner of his own greatest success when he tried to do something the critics or public didn't easily associate with a Hitchcock picture, usually the work failed. Perhaps his biggest failure was Under Capricorn, the period love story he did in 1949 with Ingrid Bergman, Joseph Cotton, Michael Wilding. However, the French New Wave critics and filmmakers of the 50s and 60s consider it among his best, taking particular note of the amazing sustained scenes with a flowing romantic camera. Hitch himself mainly used to disown this movie, saying he didn't like costume pictures, he never made another one, because he said, I can never imagine anyone in a costume picture ever going to the bathroom. The year before, in 1948, Hitchcock had tried a very ambitious experiment, shooting all of Rope in long seven, eight, nine minute takes. Starring James Stewart, John Dahl, and Farley Granger, it was also Hitch's first in color. But he came to believe the flowing camera work was not as effective a technique as his usual way of cutting. Jimmy Stewart once told me the shooting of rope was quite an astonishing thing to see. Walls and furniture flying, being shifted soundlessly, camera on rails. He said, you'd put your cigarette down over here in an ashtray and walk away and come back and the ashtray and the, the table and the whole wall would be gone. Having been brought up in a strict Catholic family, then educated at a Jesuit school, Hitchcock's decision to do a picture about a priest certainly had personal implications. I Confess features an extraordinarily sensitive performance from Montgomery Clift as a young priest who is torn between betraying the secrets of the confessional, a murderer has confessed to him, or being convicted for the crime himself. Anne Baxter, Brian Ahern, Carl Malden co-starred on location in Quebec. Hitch used to say the picture didn't have enough humor, but it did have some of his most romantic scenes. But it was late. We'd missed the last ferry back from the island. When Hitchcock was about five years old, his father sent him with a note down to the chief of police, who, Hitch told me, read the note and promptly put me into a cell and locked the door for five minutes, then let me out saying, that's what we do to naughty little boys, you see. Looking at a picture Hitch made 52 years later in 1957, The Wrong Man, starring Henry Fonda and Vera Miles, this traumatic childhood memory comes vividly across as the director puts himself and the audience in the place of an innocent man arrested for robbery. This was based on a true story. Fourteen years earlier, in 1943, Hitchcock made a thriller set in a small California town, one that had some success in its day and would continue among the director's own personal favorites, Shadow of a Doubt. Starring Joseph Cotton as the infamous Merry Widow murderer who hides out with his loving sister and her family and his especially partial niece, played by Teresa Wright. The script was co-written by one of America's great playwrights and novelists, Mr. Thornton Wilder, the author of Our Town. This was Hitchcock's Our Town, and is the latest Hitchcock picture to be made available, and it's well worth a look. The only other film of his besides Psycho, in which the lead is the heavy. Horrible. Faded, fat, greedy women. They're alive. They're human beings. Are they? Let me go! I've got to do this, Charlie. So long as you know what you do about me, 